Is this a redox reaction? Determine the oxidation number for each element and then determine what, if anything, has been oxidized and reduced. Well, if something was oxidized, something has to be reduced. So, uh, or neither of them happened. Let's set up our formalism here. So we've got our oxidation number, rho. We've got our work row down here. And then I'm splitting up all the elements. So each element has its own oxidation number. I'm crossing out coefficients because we will not be worrying about them in this course anyway. And let's see. Uh, just trying to remember the rules myself here. So hydrogens plus one, we have no hydrogens. Oxygens minus two, minus two, minus two. Um, now, monatomic ions. See, if you've memorized your ions, uh, at least their uh, formulas, you'll be able to see that KCl is really made out of K plus and Cl minus, which are both monatomic ions. Instead of having two unknowns, that one has zero unknowns and it's done. We also see a K plus over here because ClO3 is the chlorate ion and ClO4 is the perchlorate ion. So the more nomenclature you know, the better at this point, um, especially if you can recognize the forms of the ions. So that just leaves us with our two chlorines that we don't know. Let's go through our formal process or our informal process, our my process, if you will. There are three oxygens, each at minus two, that's minus six. There's just one potassium ion. The charge on this is zero. That means this one must be plus five. Coming over here, we have four oxygens for minus eight plus one, only one chlorine, so it has to bear the full of that plus seven charge there. And now let's see what things, if anything, has been oxidized. I see a chlorine at a five plus five, and I see a chlorine at a minus one, and a chlorine at a plus seven on the product side. So for this particular one, it's interest, what's interesting about it is that really all four of these have, um, four, right where the four comes in is, there's uh, one, four chlorines here, one chlorine and three chlorines here. So in fact, these four chlorines, some of them have gone from plus five to minus one, And some of them have gone from plus five to plus seven. So what's interesting about this is that the chlorine has been both oxidized and reduced. Let's see which one is which. I always start with my oxidation. Plus five to plus seven is more positive. That means that these, that these chlorines were oxidized. That means the other ones were reduced. And plus five to minus one that's more negative, they gained electrons. Grrr. Let's reflect on the question, is this a redox reaction? Yes. Determine the oxidation number for each element, done, and then determine what, if anything, has been oxidized and reduced. Chlorine has been both oxidized and reduced. So a little weird, but totally possible. Now, this is a type of reaction called a single replacement reaction. And we will talk more about these. Uh, but for now, instead of double replacement, which had two ionic compounds, this has a metal and an ionic compound or a strong electrolyte, let's say, a strong acid in this case. And this is gonna be a redox reaction uh, in order to go through our process to see what was oxidized and what was reduced. We'll do the same thing we always do. 
always, well, at least in this lecture outline. And we'll go with green this time. We see our oxygens are always minus two, minus two. Our hydrogens are plus one. When they're in a compound, I see this hydrogen all by itself. This is zero. This is a one element formula. And you can also note that there's no charge on this. So there's nothing to balance, meaning that if it's gonna equal zero, then the hydrogen has to be a zero. Same thing with this magnesium. A one element formula has oxidation number zero, and those are done. Now, let's go ahead and, oh, there's one more that we can do before we work on our sulfurs. That's this magnesium. Magnesium is a monatomic ion. It's in group two, so it's plus two. So now the only thing left to do is the, yeah, interesting, the sulfurs. Um, and we've sort of seen this before. So four oxygens, two hydrogens, the whole thing equals zero. So now we've got a plus six for this sulfur. Plus two minus eight, looking very similar to the other one numbers wise, this is also a plus six. So sulfur has been neither oxidized nor reduced. Let's see what has been. And for this, we'll go ahead and go to red. I see magnesium here and magnesium plus two. That's a change in oxidation number. And I see plus one and zero. So those are my two changes in oxidation number. That's how we're gonna find uh, Leo and Grr. Zero to plus two is going to be our Leo, our lose electrons oxidation, because it's losing negative things and becoming more positive. And plus one to zero, that's going to be our grrrr, because it's gaining electrons there. Now, a little something added on to this is what is the oxidation and reduction half reaction? And that here's what this looks like. Focus in on only the two species that are being oxidized, in this case, for the oxidation half reaction. And we're gonna have magnesium, and we can include its phase here. And it's going to be going to magnesium two plus, and that's aqueous. This is a strong electrolyte, putting together a lot of what we've learned. And what's different about the oxidation half reaction is the oxidation half reaction actually includes the electrons. So plus two electrons because the magnesium, when it becomes magnesium two plus, it must lose two electrons. Hello, here are the electrons being lost. And I'll put lost in parentheses there, not because I'm a big fan of that show lost that was once on, but because we might also call them being produced, at least for this oxidation half reaction. For the reduction half reaction, keeping everything on screen if we can, we have H plus here. I'm gonna leave some space going to H2 gas, and there's two H's here, and lo and behold, there's two H pluses over here, and they're aqueous. Sulfuric acid is a strong acid. It is also a strong electrolyte, as we've talked about. And then, oop, I think I ate up all my space, but it turns out, see I have two pluses. I'm gonna need two electrons here as well, and what you'll notice about oxidation and reduction half reactions is that even though there are charges that are part of them, the two pluses and the two minuses cancel out to make zero charge, which is the same charge as on the other side. Two, plus, two minuses, two pluses, zero charge. Charge is conserved just like atoms in chemical reactions. 
And with that, I will leave you to do this one, G, then I will be looking, and H. I think you can do both of them.